quickly. All right, thank you. So design is what gives life to an idea. It is what makes an idea or concept relatable. So um, take an airplane also, for instance, before airplanes came to existence, it, it, it existed, I think, as an idea in the mind of the creator. Now, I, I was reading something also a, a while back. The, the first images or see what we can call the design that was leveraged on later on as, uh, as concept for uh, um, flying machines and airplanes, I think was first designed by uh, Da Vinci or so very long ago. So then later on, we then found um, the Wright brothers coming together to put, you know, something together to be able to, you know, conceptualize what a, an ideal flying machine should be. So if they were not able to put it into design, if they were not able to create that picture, what they had in mind, the, the idea would not be relatable. It will not be expressible or it will not be it, it will not be understandable to layman. And even at the point where they even treated the design, you know how many people will look at them and say, oh, this cannot work and things like that. But then imagine there was no design at all and they just set about you know creating it. Take one more example. Now you want to build a house. You you don't you just do not uh, uh, you know go to the aspect of just creating creating the building as it were. Now there are things to consider: the size of your land, you know, the topography of the land, and things like that. The area where the land is located. And then the desire in your art as to the kind of house you want to live in or build. So then that idea is presented to an architect and they're able to come up with a design that fits the size of the land, that fits all those other factors that you put in. Also, what you have in your pocket also matters, you know, when it comes to building of houses and basically any other thing. So, but then that design that's been created by the architect is what gives you know, uh, 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 what gives concise understanding to what you are trying to create. So that is the one thing that has remained constant, even as the world of design has changed and has evolved over time. And this is one thing we need to place, we need to put in mind. The design world is ever changing, but this is constant. Design is what gives life to an idea and it is what makes an idea or concept relatable and executable so we'll go over to the next thing now how has design evolved over time you know design as we as we used to know it has evolved in the way we do design you know design has improved um, the tools we used to do designs also have improved i was talking to one of my classes uh, um, I mean, at one of my classes a while back, and I was making mention of how I used to, um, I, I grew up seeing my dad do, you know, banner designs with the old stencil method, where you come together, you draw all of those things on, you know, cardboards and stuff, tape them together. And when you would print them, you use paint, they get good and buy paint. And then, you know, they start with the stencil they made, they start painting, you know, those matrices they put out on, on. Uh, uh, they start painting those um, letterings and on things on fabric or probably on another kind of material, but usually it was fabric. But over time, the way we then do designs change. Before flyers were made with hand, so you find you find an artist who is very good in typography calligraphy and all of those things to make uh, um, flyers and stuff for you. But then digital innovation came to the way we did flyers, posters, and those things. And then we started doing designs on Corel Draw, we started doing designs on Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, and things like that, and various other tools. But you know that even with those tools that we have, those tools themselves have evolved. They are not what they used to be. If you are familiar, I don't know when some of us started designing, but some of us that are familiar with um, maybe Corel Draw 2007, Corel Draw 2009, Corel Draw 2011, 2012, and then it came to 
X3, X5, X7, and then we even have Coral Draw 2020. You, and you see the improvement that has come to all of those um, um, softwares and, and tools that we use. Think about uh, Adobe packages as well. Adobe packages have evolved over time. Uh, we have new innovations. They've made the tools even more flexible. You can even do things way faster and smarter with some of the tools that have been incorporated. Before we used to use the CS version, now we use the Creative Cloud versions. And then we also currently we, we run on uh, Adobe Creative Cloud 2021. So a lot of innovations have come to the way we do designs. So design really isn't what it used to be anymore. Uh, um, it's constantly changing, it's constantly evolving. The approach even that we take to do designs, you know, before, you know, you can just conceptualize something in your mind and then you run, rush and put things to paper. But then because we understand that user experience is key now to whatever design it is that we are doing. So the approach we take to do designs now is, is even way, way different because of the end goal. And then because there's the competition is, is stronger, the competition is stronger. You have different big names out there trying to do things and everybody trying to remain relevant in their niche and market. So you are, you don't want to you don't want to do things after sadly so the approach to which uh, uh, we do designs the approach that we take to do designs has also evolved over time the technology we use the tools we use the approach we use has changed over time but one thing also remains constant the foundational principles that make design what it is have not changed the element of design design thinking the design process those things have not changed they remain uh, uh, um, constant. You cannot throw away uh, 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 the principle of typography now. You cannot throw away the principle, the, your color theory when it comes to design and things like that. Also, one of the things that we ought to, ought to understand is that uh, in this evolving and emerging world of design, we have, we have, uh, uh, um, we have, applications of design and fields that we've probably not even heard before. So I want us to, to shift our focus or our minds from the fact that design is limited to uh, making graphic uh, uh, designs like flyers, logos, those things, cover art. You know, lately I, I, I keep seeing designs, uh, uh, publicity designs of different freelancers and things like that. And the, the, the awareness that they've not evolved from what is or what used to be baffles me. Why is that everybody, almost all of them I keep saying, uh, I do flyers, I do logos, I do music cover art, I do those th this and that and all of that. It's still, we're still like tied to the, the idea or the concept of how design used to be. Meanwhile, it has evolved. There, there's such a thing as organizational design now. The, that that is that involves helping companies or industries create a structure to how their organization runs. It's a design field now that people are getting really paid for. It comes under probably brand strategy and consultancy. Those are some things that have come into designs that people have not even paid attention to. So the emerging world of designs that we are having now is not going to be limited to putting pencil to paper or putting your pen tool to, to your canvas on Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator, it's going to be way, way more than that. And then you need to be informed to be able to stay relevant in that new emerging world of design. So I'll go on now. There are threats faced by designers based on the increased demand for designers across board and the evolution of technology. This threat is, 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 is enormous and I think to a large extent, we have uh, quantified it less, maybe because of the kind of exposure we have on this side of the divide. Now, we'll notice that there is this increase with the way designers are, are wanted. But one other thing is, is, is worthy of note. Designers are needed, but then the requirement for such designers has changed. Check through any job description that you can find online and stuff now. You'd see that uh, what job descriptions used to be for designers back then is not what it used to be now. In fact, men, you, 
you'd likely find job descriptions for designers and you'd be like, are you looking for a programmer or you're looking for a designer? There are different other factors that contribute to those things now. Now, I demand for designers and even with limited time frame, you see clients bring in projects and they want it like in the nick of time. Now, why? Their exposure or understanding of how design should be is way different from what many designers know now. So imagine a, 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 a US-based client who has been exposed to, to uh, um, the possibility of getting certain types of design in like hours or in a couple of days. But you as a designer in Nigeria, who is now freelancing on Fiverr or Hopwork, is not yet exposed to that kind of design or to such tools that designers that are based in the UK or the US used or the approach they use in making such designs, you would definitely find yourself in a bit of a fix to be able to, you know, match up and catch up with that, um, match up and catch up with what is expected of you by the client. So those things are things that we need to, you know, pay attention to and then new technologies are coming up every time new technologies there are different companies popping up here and they're trying to make life easier for people by the way they do designs and things i'll take canva for instance before uh you'd have to contact a graphic designer to help you get uh to help you get the design done right now uh uh then canva came now canva as it is today is not what it used to be three four five years back I don't, I'm not sure, I don't know if they're up to five years, but I think they've been around for quite a while. Now, it wasn't what it used to be when they started. Now, it was quite limited. But have you seen Canva of today? Think about almost any kind of design you want to do. Is it, is it a, 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 a broker design? Is it, uh, you know, magazine design? Is it ID card? Is it, you know, just think about anything. You can even make short videos with little bit of animation and stuff that makes it easy for people to make designs on the go. And the fact that many people are no longer dependent on print media makes it even, you know, more alarming for a lot of designers. You know, I used to know some designers that do all of these print media and, and things a while back. And then I look at their relevance now. Why? Fine, they were good at what they used to do or what they do, basically. But then, to a large extent, is becoming they, they are becoming endangered by the emerging world of new technologies and things that are coming. People really, except it is highly important, maybe a big event or something, people would naturally not, you know, normally not go to make uh, um, maybe banners or posters or something because there's social media for you to share your uh, event flyer. So think about it. You make your event flyer even with all the paparazzi you want to add to it on 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 on, uh, um, on Canva, and then you move to you move to social media and share your flyer. You have sidelined certain kinds of designers and their approach to doing designs. You sidelined them totally. No food for them for that. Uh, uh, but before they were the top dogs in the in the design uh, um, space. They were the top dogs because you would always have to go for them because you didn't know how to do design and then you would also want to print but now you don't even need to know how to do design to be able to get designs done because you have templates to use on canva canva is even far-fetched medullary this is medullary if you go through the medullary website there's a template section so if you don't know how to do design at all just come to the template section pick a template put your details in and in the blink of an eye, you have your design downloaded and you can begin to share. That is how technologies are changing the face of how design is being done. And basically it's not just in, in the design industry, it is all over, it is all over. And well, I've been making reference to design as we, you and I know it, there's a whole, uh, you know, vast world of design out there. Is it engineering design, architectural design, interior design, things like that automotive design, different uh, aspects of designs like that. So we need to be, you know, really, really on our toes and versatile with the new um, emerging technologies that are coming out so that we will remain relevant. We, we were talking 
with a couple of colleagues a while back I, 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 and um, we were even making mention of how probably web designers are going to find it hard if they don't evolve over time because uh, uh, platforms, content management systems like WordPress, Wix, and October CMS, and a lot of others are also coming up to make sure that it is even way easier to develop websites and things like that. But now, if a, a web designer, I mean, a, a web developer is not on their tools to, to be able to stay relevant in, in their field, that means after a while, they'll become redundant. And then there will be, you know, that phase for them is over and they probably have to start finding something to do. So it is important for us to be able to know what it is that is changing, how we can leverage on it for better, you know, for better advantage. So I'll go over to the next thing now. So the challenges that, that has been faced, big, major challenges really that has been faced by designers also include staying relevant. So IT is how, how exactly are we going to stay relevant and how exactly are we going to adapt to how exactly are we going to adapt to the technological change that um, we are facing? All right. So how to stay relevant? I would say it is essential that we learn new skills. It is essential that we learn new skills. There are a lot of content out there, a lot of platforms that are really not really not, you know, courses and things like that, Udemy, Coursera, you know, uh, uh, um, Audacity and the rest of them like that giving out content some of them are free some of them are paid there are other platforms like the future like interaction designs and things like that that are giving out courses and content that will help us to stay relevant you need to keep learning you also need to read and make research if you're going to stay relevant in this evolving new world of design and basically in the new world that we're getting into that is vast changing you need to continuously read and you know make research also, you need to redesign and update your portfolio. It is not that portfolio you've been using like two, three years back that you still keep using. You know, some people, just like some people would not update their CV. It is the same CV they've been using over and over and over and over. And they keep wondering why they're not getting jobs. The same thing for designers. You need to redesign and update your portfolio. So as you're learning, making research and updating your skills, you need to be updating your portfolio as well. Then you need to keep, you know, a, a, you know, a very, I, I, I don't know, what adjective to use now your connection has to be solid that is your network you need to connect with designers across board don't be this um somebody that's just caged in one corner uh, the way i do my things and stuff like that you'll be for, you know you'll be forgotten quickly so you need to keep an unhealthy network and a vast network you know of like minds and people who have also gone ahead in the industry seek mentorship for people who have gone ahead don't be uh the way i do my things and things like that don't be prejudiced against the way people other people do things seek mentorship join networks join people who have gone ahead and you must embrace change you we cannot avoid change eh? it is impossible to avoid change change will always come but we must embrace it people who fail to embrace change are usually forgotten in history. You don't want to be forgotten in history. And one last thing that you must also consider is that you must be unique. As much as you're trying to learn new skills, as much as you're trying to leverage on the experiences of others in the networks that you've joined and created, as much as you're trying to make research and things like that, pick new ideas from different people and things like that, you must also be unique. You must you must try to stand on your own. Like people should know you for who you are. Oh, this is how Faith Bolaji Blessing does his designs and is good at it, is unique at it. This is how so, 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 and so does their design. They know you for it. I think somebody like Chris Du, for instance, you should check about the man called Chris Du. I think he's the founder and CEO of The Future. You should check The Future out online. That guy is so unique and is very talented like he's one of the most celebrated designers in the world but he's very unique he's just different you know him for who he is for what he does and he's unapologetic about it so and he's constantly evolving in fact a lot of things that we learn today is credited to chris do because of the kind of research that man does into the evolving world of technology so you must be unique as well i'm trying to rush so that uh, we will not waste much of our time. 
So also to remain relevant in this emerging new world of design, the, the following skills are skills that you can consider, but they are not limited to this. There are other skills that you can consider as well. You should consider, you know, you should consider UX copywriting. No, so we understand that there's UI UX design, but then there's such a thing as UX copywriting. So US copywriters and UX designers define, you know, the way people um, perceive a product. So in addition to your knowledge of UI design, user interface design, UI experience design, you might want to consider US copywriting. And for real, copywriting as a whole in general is one of the most high demand skills currently in the industry. So as a copy, copywriters are really making it like currently now. So you should consider, you know, UX copywriting. Also, as a designer, you should probably consider programming. At least, maybe front-end programming, you know. Most job descriptions I've seen over time have pointed to the fact that uh, uh, um, the designer should probably have vast knowledge of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and things like that. Some of them are even more vast. They will ask you to have knowledge of probably React Native and things like that. So you might want to consider programming as well so you might wonder do you know, they like programming i don't like programming how do i put all of this together well it's not as it were it is not a a uh it is not you know it is not a compulsion but there are things to consider you should also consider environmental graphic design environmental graphic design as long as we remain on it there will still be designs that relate to our environment you know, there will be events, there will be things like that. There will be architectural designs, there will be things like that. Designs that relate to the environment. You might also want to consider that. So as long as we remain on this earth, there will be designs that relate to what we do in our ecosystem. So you might also want to consider that research on environmental graphic design. One of the other things that you consider, which is fastly becoming an in thing in the world of design is augmented reality design. So a lot of industries are going straight into augmented reality. Think of the game design industry. They're going into augmented reality. Think of even you know regular entertainment and things like that. A lot of features on certain phones and stuff are going into augmented reality. So you might also want to consider that these are skills that are going to be in demand because user experience of the future is going to be based really on augmented reality that you can navigate, you know, Maybe even Google Map or something over time will probably rely on augmented reality. You can navigate the terrain, you can do things, you can play a game, you know, you can be part, you know, like you're part of a system through augmented reality. So you might also want to consider that. And one of the, when it comes to interface design, one of, you know, the changes or one of the changes that is coming to the interface design uh, um, system, as it were, is voice interface. So we've probably seen movies and things where a lot of things are voice activated. And then you speak to doors, or you, you, you think about automated houses and things like that. You're able to speak to doors. You're able to you know control things with your voice. So you might also want to consider developing a skill around voice interface design, where you're able to create designs for systems that are voice controlled. All right, so like I said earlier, excellent user experience is really the ultimate end goal of every design. Excellent user experience. So every industry, every organization will want to invest so much in making sure that whatever product it is they are creating, whatever solution it is they are creating, whatever technology it is they are creating, they, their users get excellent user experience and then they have good feedback. So you as a designer who we want to remain relevant must be dedicated to creating excellent user experience. Don't just be Moshe flyer graphic designer, Moshe logo graphic designer, Moshe, you know, all those pet. You need to think outside of the box. Are we together now? So you, these are things that you need to consider. So lastly, I would say be on your toes. The demand and application for design will continue to evolve across various industries with respect to technology and man's evolution. You must be constantly on your toes to be able to maintain your place and to be able to pave the way for others coming behind you. There's a lot resting on our shoulders as designers in this current dispensation so that we, for us to be able to remain relevant and pave the way for those who will be coming behind us to be able to also navigate their way through. So thank you for listening to this very short 
and brief you know exposition on um what the future of design will be like in the nearest future in fact it is not far again it is now the future really is now and things are rapidly changing so i say thank you for listening and um i guess i will hand over back to mr taiwo now to continue the session all right Thank you very much, Mr. Balaji Blessing, Mr. Phil Balaji Blessing. Uh, I appreciate you for the great lecture. Uh, and to our audiences that came for this meeting, we appreciate you too. Uh, we're going to continue this lecture. We're going to continue this lecture next month. And uh, for questions, uh, we'll be uploading these videos on our YouTube channel. So if you have any question, you can forward these you can ask there our our